You've probably seen this, you've probably played this, but we've never reviewed this. So let's review it. This is the review for the game Wingspan, the good and bad about the game. By the end of this review, you will know, if you don't already have it, if this is the game for you. We have 7 burning questions that we will answer in this video, but before we do that, Giannis, what is this game all about? Wingspan is a competitive light strategy game where each player has a hand of birds at the beginning game and you're gonna be laying them into your aviary scoring points at the end of the game, plus getting different kinds of abilities. At the end of the game, the winner is the player who has the most points. And you get m points for multiple things. You get points for the birds themselves, you get points for the birds' abilities, you get points for the eggs, you get points for... Well, you get it. You get points most for everything. So when it comes to your turn, you can do one of the four actions. So you can play a bird and add it to your aviary. You can gain food that will help you play birds. You can lay eggs in your aviary. Or you can draw cards that you can then later play in your aviary. Each player has eight action tokens. In your turn, you use one to pay for one of these four actions. And then uh, the next player goes. So Wingspan is all about managing resources. Cards in your hand, which are the birds, food, for which you pay for the birds, and eggs, which score your points and also for additional costs. That's the overall. We're going to talk a lot more about this game in this video. So let's jump into the first question, which is who would you buy it for? Three, two, one. Boom. Gamers that want to relax. Everyone. Everyone, all right, go ahead. When I mean everyone, I mean mostly people who maybe don't buy that many games themselves. Plus, this game is going to come out in our local language. Since we're not native English speakers, it might be a bit tough because there are a ton of text on the cards. It's been localized in so many languages. If you get it in your own language, you can play it with most anyone. It looks great. It plays great and it scratches that itch for gamers and non-gamers. It's not quite a family game. There is a lot of text, there is a lot of decisions to be made. And I would say, like, kids not wouldn't like to play it, but it might be too complicated for people who are not gamers. That's why gamers. But also, it's not super heavy. It's not meant for big gamers. It's somewhere in between those two worlds. So I wrote down gamers that want to relax. Next question. What's the best alternative? Three, two, two one. one. Let's go. I recently got Point Salad and oh, you played it. it. Yeah. And I liked it. Mm -hmm. And I guess I agree. Point Salad is basically when there are cards that will show you this is the way you can get points. So you get cards that give you points in yeah, this way. So for example, two tomatoes plus two carrots give you six points. Yeah. And this is wingspan. These two birds that make these kind of nests will give you each two points. So if you would make wingspan light, mm -hmm. that'd be point salad. I guess I went the other way. Uh, if point salad is like lighter version of wingspan, then uh, red rising is a bit more complex version. But I get the same feel there because there is a ton of cards. They're all unique and the rules themselves are quite simple because there you just all you do is uh, you play down a card, do the ability of the card and then take one card and do the ability of the place where you took the card from. Felt very similar to me. Another thing we need to talk about is the pricing of this game, which is $60 is the suggested retail price. And to be honest, I think it is well worth the price. Absolutely. When you see the insides of the box, it is freaking amazing. Yeah. All the cards are unique. You have all these colorful eggs. There are four boards like this. Uh, <laughs> what was that? What the? This. <laughs> the dice tower, the little that looks like a birdhouse. So it is a very gorgeous, beautiful, and well produced game. So $60, I think, is well worth it. Totally agreed. Next question, what is the best player count? Let's go. Any. Since the game flows quite quickly, and you'll probably elaborate on that, and as I said, this feels like a good game for everyone. It plays with any number of players pretty well. Obviously, it's going to be longer with like five, the maximum, but I feel it's still fine. I really enjoy playing with two. It's basically your turn few seconds, your turn again, and yeah, it yeah. goes really, really fast. And I really enjoyed it as a two player game, as well as three and four. I played both of these, no problems with more players as well. With five, I feel it might be a bit too much. Yeah, well, five people will be probably on the longer side. Next question, what is the worst thing about this game? I made a little drawing. 
<laughs> that is the worst thing. If you play with people who haven't played a lot of games, with, with like non-gamers, it might be too much. Even though visually this game definitely is gonna, you know, make them want to play it. But once you're like, okay, your turn, like, uh, should I uh, play get full egg? It might be overwhelming for non-gamers. But it's nitpicking. To be honest, there's not a lot of bad. This game is good for what it is. This game involves a lot of luck. It's not that big of a deal because it's a quick game and you don't feel it all, all the time. But from time to time you will feel it that I was just a lot unluckier than the other person. You might have this great combination because you just got these two birds that work really well together, while I do in my turn almost nothing because I just didn't have them. But it's not overwhelming, it's not that it ruins the game, uh, but it's just something you have to uh, take into account when uh, playing this game. What is the best part of this game? Yes. Three, two, one, let's go. I don't need to elaborate, this is a gorgeous game. If you would be building factories here, I mean, I don't think it would have been that popular, but the birds, it just makes it look really, really good. And the design is great. Obviously the gameplay is great as well, but the looks. It's depth for such a quick game, because it really gives me the same feeling as a lot heavier games do. Satisfaction that you get when something works uh, well together. It feels like your decisions matter, and that is very, very important for me. But it's also quick. It's done in, I don't know, 40 minutes? It really does something for me that other games until now haven't done, which is that in 40 minutes I get a satisfaction that I have, you know, done something, built something, and it's awesome. And you know what else doesn't take a lot of time? Liking and subscribing to our channel, because it really does a lot for us and is super easy for you. Next question is, when would you play it? As I mentioned before, this it, it has the feeling of heavy game, but it's not heavy game. It's getting better. <laughs> for 40 minutes, uh, it's really relaxing, easy to play. So maybe if it's getting late, and you have friends who maybe are gamers or who want to play something serious, but it's too late for, I don't know, terraforming Mars or something like that, then I, I would go for Wingspan because it gives you the, the same feelings, it makes you feel good, but you can manage it. Your brain can uh, go through it and uh, not go to sleep. You're enjoying this as a gamer, mm -hmm. and I'm enjoying this as a, like a family game. That's why I have it put it down when would I play it, as soon as our localized version is available. Because I'm gonna play this mostly with my kids and family, and for them English, they're getting there, but not still easy to read. But our local language would be easy enough, and I'd get to play a lot of it, more than I would now, probably. And now, the final rating. Three, two, two one. Okay. Mine would have been must-have as well. And I keep like, maybe we would be have localized version, if it would have localized version. As a gamer, I do enjoy this, but I don't feel the need to have this, because I'd rather probably play something heavier, or, you know, something else that I already have. But if it would be accessible to my family and non-gamers, then it becomes must-have for me. Somebody comes visiting and they've, they've played Settlers of Catan, I could take this out. And there's nothing wrong with Settlers of Catan, but it is a very light game. I don't get that Euro, you know, Euro feel where you're like trying to make these combos and everything. But I do get it here. And non-gamers would enjoy the looks of it and would still, you know, be competitive and play because it's not that, you know, complex of a, or a long game for that matter. I was struggling with this one because I was desperately trying to find a way to make it fantastic, but I just couldn't. It really fits in my gaming shelf perfectly. It provides something that other play, uh, games don't, because it's beautiful, it's fantastic. The gameplay is fun, simple, it's quick. It does something that other games do not for me, and uh, it's overall just great. Say what you want, it is a must-have. All right, that's it with our review. I hope you really enjoyed our video uh, and you like the way we review our games. If you do, then for sure do all the good things, which are like, subscribe, preferably share, and join us on our next video. Yeah, for sure. Let us know maybe in the comments down below as well what games should we review, what are your favorite games that we should take a look at, and we'll see you next time. Bye.